Hello, I'm here at Embedded World 2025 on the DigiKey booth and joining me at the moment is Nick from Red Bataille. He's the technical sales manager and we're going to be talking about Red Bataille's launch of its second generation of products and customization services. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having us. Oh, you're very welcome. Why don't you introduce yourself and the company for me? Yes, so as you already said, I'm Nick. I'm the technical sales manager with the Red Bataille company. I've been six years already with them. And I'm really happy to uh, be part of this new launch, which was quite uh, due date. But again, this speaks to the, um, uh, let's say, success of the first generation, which lasted mm -hmm. since 2013. Yeah. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, we, we have more and more customers every year. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us what your flagship product is? Yeah, sure, sure. So the flagship product of the Red Pita, it's still the number one product that we released in 2013. And this is STEM Lab 125.14. Uh, there's no surprise that the Gen 2 is actually based on the flagship product. Mm -hmm. So this will bring even more performance to the table compared to the older product. And the software will be the same. Everybody who will want to upgrade, it can do it very simply and easily. OK. Can you dive a little bit deeper into, into the new lineup and what makes it a significant upgrade from the oh, yeah. previous generation? Oh, yeah. So. Compared to the previous generation, yes, we do use the same families of uh, FPGAs as uh, main processors uh, from Xilinx, the Zinc 7010 and 7020. However, the new Gen 2 has a totally redesigned front end. So we have new design filters there, which provide a much better low noise performance. Uh, the uh, crosstalk, it's uh, much less, so it's, this is a good thing. And, um, uh, again, on the connector side, we did a little bit of modernizing. So now, instead of the uh, SATA connectors that we used for daisy chaining multiple Red Pitaya units together, now people can use the USB Type-C, as well as for the power connector and for the serial console and also for the USB host. So all of these are USB Type-C now. Mm -hmm. And maybe one of the biggest uh, improvements is the addition of a extension 3 connector so they have a totally new connector on the board which will bring a lot of functionality so people can now boot from a emmc memory instead of the traditional sd card and uh, the additional board can also host a controller that can act as a hardware watchdog um, to explain it just a little bit for the people that uh, let's say deploy this uh, embeddable device somewhere remotely and uh, if some software freezes uh, maybe not our software but yeah you never know what can happen <laughs> on the field yeah uh, this controller board this watchdog will watch for that and it can reset the board so this will be very helpful for uh, real-time applications like that and uh, also this extension connector will host uh, like 16 digital IO lines that will be high speed like a direct bus to the FPGA, and it's going to be like a one gigabit of bandwidth, so it's going to be really good for application, mm. for people that have applications that need to, to get the data out. Yeah. yeah. I'm interested to hear what, what feedback you've had from users that have influenced the development of this new generation. Oh, yeah. Well, we survive with feedback. To be honest, this is how we developed new and future projects. We always take into account the, the feedback from the users. Yeah. So if you take a look at all the product line that we have, the models that we have, like uh, SDR Lab, this was done with feedback, especially from the ham radio amateur uh, environment. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, mostly industrial customers requesting four inputs instead of the traditional two inputs and two outputs. And uh, yeah, now we finally got around to this Gen 2, which uh, let's say 5 to 10 percent of the industrial customers requested a little bit better performance on the front end and of course the, the updated connectors yeah. set. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you, you mentioned the, the USB-C connectivity and improved noise performance. Yeah. So how do these changes align with industry trends in test and measurement? Oh, this aligns very well because this was actually requested by the industrial customers a lot. Right. You know? They did the, this micro USB standard even though they would prefer the USB Type-C. Uh, however, they would be very happy to, to have this. Yeah. Board, yeah. <laughs> and, and customization has always been a key focus for, yes, for Red yes. Pitaya. So what kind of custom solutions are you offering and what's driving that demand? Yeah. Well, 
we can talk about customization services for many hours because every time I, I pick up the phone for a service like this, it's a new thing. Yeah, people can uh, sometimes ask, you know, just for the shape of the board, not to be with the front connectors uh, so rounded. They would prefer to have flat, or maybe they would prefer the connectors to be oriented like 90 degrees or maybe they don't like the SD card memory storage, they would like some different one. Anybody can request um, different things. We actually have a graph in our brochure here, uh, just a mock-up of uh, what people uh, would like as modifications. Yeah. Uh, every time it's a new thing. And we have been offering these customization services from the beginning, but maybe we marketed more uh, in the last years. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. we have been offering and doing customization um, from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It can be sometimes small customization. Uh, sometimes it can be only like a software customization. Some people may ask just a particular application. Yeah, yeah. And you've also, you've also been known to bridge the gap between hobbyist tools and industrial grade yes, equipment. Yes. So where does Gen 2 position you in that market? Yes, yes. So this speaks a little bit about the affordability of the Red Pita also yeah. because it's not uh, so often where somebody can purchase a multi-instrument like oscilloscope, spectrum analyzer, uh, vector network analyzer, LCR meter and so on and so on. And even the students can afford it, right? Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. I see them using it as an instrument uh, on the day-to-day -day learning of electronics or, or uh, measurement uh, studies. And then when they do the PhD, they do the whole diploma by programming and make it into a radar or some crazy application like that. <laughs> yeah. And I understand you're, you're collaborating with Texas Instruments on another version yes. of your STEM lab. So can you share some details about that? Just a few. Okay. Just a few. <laughs> so uh, the, the collaboration with Texas Instruments came about uh, because they have some new chips yep. that are very low latency, right? So this means like, uh, this is basically how ADC works. It takes uh, some amount of time until you get the signal to the input and then the ADC does its job and gives you the digital right. value, right? Yep. So in terms of electronics, this can take up uh, like three or four clock cycles. So now we were able to reduce this a lot with the new Texas Instrument chips. Fantastic. So, and, and coming back to talking about students, I mean, you're already used in over 400 universities worldwide. Yes. So how do you see your role in, in education and R&D evolving? This um, area, like actually all the others, but maybe this is growing more and more every time. So again, it's a very good tool for the university because it's compact and affordable, yeah. and it gives you so many instruments at your fingertips. Yeah, it takes seconds to switch from an oscilloscope and spectrum analyzer and sometimes just buying one spectrum analyzer would be the same cost as the whole Red Pitaya. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and the demand for software-defined instrumentation is growing as well. So where yeah. do you see the test and measurement industry heading in, say, yeah. the next five years? Well, this is the very hard question, you know, <laughs> what will happen in the future with the industry in general. But one thing is for sure that we noticed from the past, yeah, from the history, uh, industry always will need more and more performance at the same price, yeah? Yeah. or more performance even for less price. So I think we fit in there quite well. It's just a matter of people discovering us. So thank you very much for this opportunity. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. And, and what's next, Repetai? Are you gonna announce any, any more launches this year or is that secret? <laughs> yeah, well, some things are big like this low latency. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be a whole new product, uh, but maybe we have other stuff that can be considered like a new uh, releases so we have a collaboration ongoing with arduino okay so this will be really good because a lot of people there's a huge amount of people that don't know about red pitaya but they know about arduino yeah. right they do simple automations with these microcontrollers so the fact that you can also program now the red pitaya from the arduino ide environment that that's really great yeah, yeah. fantastic this is one thing um, we are thinking about uh, making a bigger multi-channel solution also. Um, yeah, we have some more stuff on the line, but maybe we don't want to talk oh, about okay. all of them. Yeah. Well, watch this space then. <laughs> oh, well, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for sharing the details of your new Gen 2. It's been a pleasure speaking with you and thank enjoy you the much. rest of the show. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much.